Hi everyone, welcome to part two in this uh, series of videos. Um, in the first one we coloured in this um, this um, plant house, so I'm calling them, and what I've done in between times is I've coloured in the stems and leaves in exactly the same way, I've coloured in the little wooden platforms again in the same way, and the windows in the same way with each um, house. So we can now just concentrate on doing the house and the flowers. If you haven't seen the first video then you'll want to have a look at it. Um, I'll try and put a link at the top which might be easy for you to see but it will be in the description at the bottom so you can have a check that out. We're going to start with this house over here. Now I'm going to need to zoom in so bear with me. Now I'm struggling a little bit to get the right angle for my book and camera and tripod and everything else. It's all getting quite tricky. Whoop. There we go. Mm. That's the best I can do. It's a little bit squiffy, but I hope that's okay. Now I'd already decided in the last video that I wanted to do this little house in blue. Now for the orange house that we did, we used four shades. So I'm gonna actually pick four shades of blue because I do happen to have four shades of blue with the um, Ergosoft. We might not be able to do that for every house. It depends all on the, um, on the color that I pick. So this is our darkest blue, which is 33. We've got this one which is a denim type blue which is 63, that's only available in the Stedler 36 pack. We've got number 3 and the lightest one of this bunch, the number 30. So I'm going to start with the light one, the 30, and I'm going to do quite a similar thing to what we did with this house. So we started the house with a base of the lightest colour. So I'm going to do the same again. And again, a gentle amount, a gentle layer, not too heavy. Now again, pencils on its side. My hand is far away, you can't see my hand, as you can hardly see it, barely see any of the pencil. My hand is right up the part. If you've only got a short pencil that's a little trickier, but uh, do the best. You can always use a pencil extender to help you. Um, I have got a few, I think they're Derwent. Um, I'm not sure they would be the right size for these. I don't know actually what you can get for this size, but I'm sure you can. You have to do some research, maybe even ask Stedler. They're really, the customer service is fantastic. You could ask them, they might even make them. I personally am not a big fan of pencil extenders, which is why I have teeny weeny pencils. I've just noticed another bit of glass above that door. I think that's glass. So I'm not going to colour that in like this. I'm going to use my grey. Anyway, we're doing this bit. Now, I want to do some a little bit of extra shading again. Now, last time we used our slightly darker colour. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use this one because I think it will work along here. Maybe we didn't. We might have used a colour. And under the, um, um, what do you call it? Rafters, maybe? Is that the right word? under the roof here and then a little bit under the window it's also a little bit tricky to get it under that arced window it's easier on a straight line but we're done with that and the chimney pot just this bit now I think I'm going to leave this unshaded like it's a square chimney pot today now, I'm not sure we're going to use all of our colours, to be honest, because, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the denim type colour, number 63, is one of my favourite blues in the set. So I'm going to use this one for the roof. The colour in the direction that the lines are drawn on the roof. And then if you get a striping effect, it just blends in and works with the pattern. It doesn't blend, that's not the right word. It just looks right. Obviously, when you get to the end, you may not be able to do it. Now, for this bit, it's the gable end, isn't it? That's what it's called. I'm going to do it darker here and lighter up towards the top. I think we did... No, we haven't done that on the other house. It didn't look like this. It's so the same again. Oh, you can't see. Sorry. Darker there and lighter up towards the top. Now this chimney pot I'm going to do in this colour as well, but just a light bit. I 
effect on it too much. Now we need to do a little bit of shading as obviously between here and here there will be some shadow so I'm going to pop that in with this colour. We could use a different colour blue but we're ending up using the same ones. So I'm going in quite dark and then lightening up a bit towards the middle. I'm going to do the same thing here. We did this on the other roof. For some reason I like it. I don't want it too white in the middle. There we are. Now the door. I've got two colours left. I could use either of them really. Um, I think I'm going to go for the really dark one. In fact I might not use that number nine, number three, sorry, at all. Number 33. Now again, start light because it is quite a dark colour and these blues aren't, aren't so dark. So you don't want it looking all brash. Too dark. I'm just going to darken it up a bit until I feel that it's had enough layers. I like that. Now the flowers, I don't think I can push my book up to show you the ones underneath the house, unfortunately. Hang on, I can... No, that's the wrong way. Oh, I'm going to do the top. I'll worry about that in a minute. So I'm going to keep with this dark blue, which is the 33. And I'm going to do... We did the middle's light. We're going to do it the same sort of way. So we're going to do a dark bit here on each of the petals and start to drag that out towards the edge. Okay. On every one of these petals. The centres we're going to do with the lightest blue, like we did on the other plant. So it sort of matches in a way. The same with these circles, They on the other plant they were the um, lightest colour, so we shall do that in a minute. I'm just seeing what, checking in the camera as to what you can see. It's, uh, it's not always easy to remember that you've got to actually see what I'm doing. And it's quite straightforward and again, like the other flowers, it's, I find it very relaxing. Just doing the same bit over and over. Uh, I'll just pull that down so you can see the top. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to show you the bottom the flowers. You'll just have to um, believe me that I'll do them in exactly the same way and uh, I'll, um, I'll put on a full picture of the finished thing and you'll be able to see it then. So I'm just going to do them now completely out of shot so I'm afraid that you won't be able to see the only tip it up at a very odd angle for you to see. It almost feels like I've got it up on a sort of easel or something. It's just being supported by my hand so it's not going to look particularly neat but at least you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now the denim colour as I've been calling it, the number 63, I'm going to use to finish them off. I'm going to start at the top. So taking, overlapping that other colour slightly and fading it out towards the tip of the petal. It's quite difficult to do in this little space but just do the best you can. If you've only got the one shade you could just do a hard um, burnished colour in here because it is small and I think they look pretty even if they're just one colour. You can even do the middles the same colour. I think that can look really pretty too. It depends what you're looking for really. So it's just the same thing over and over. I thought this page was rather interesting rather than the houses being in trees. They're in flowers. I guess little flower fairies live in them. What do you reckon? Perhaps that's what I should call these flower fairy houses. I don't know. 
perhaps I better not as Flower Fairies is the name of a book and I think there's a Flower Fairies colouring book actually I'm sure I've seen one so perhaps I better not might be a bit misleading it's a lovely sunny day here today it uh, feels like it's taunting me to go outside but uh, I did go out yesterday and I really need to get some videos made today. I make them in batches you see when I can and the children are at school today. My husband's here but he's working upstairs so it's a good time to record a batch of videos. I find it easier to record in batches because of getting all the equipment out. I don't have a sort of desk set up with it all the time so it's easier. Right now we're going to do our very weird bottom bit. Um, but they're at home again, remote learning for a couple of days. They've had a few problems with their school building. The site has got limited access. I book sleeping, sorry. Um, due to some building works and complications, um, finding asbestos and things like that. So they're only going in today and they're off for a couple of days. And then there's a site inspection, I think, to see whether it's safe to open. I know a lot of parents are really angry about it being shut, especially as it's been shut because of lockdown. I'm going to change to number 30 and do the middles. And I'm going to do them similar to the other one, so harder at the bottom and lighter towards the top. It'll be very hard for you to see, I suspect, at this strange angle, but once I do the higher ones, you might be able to see better. So, um, so some parents are really angry and they think that the school are staying closed unnecessarily. But for me, while there's asbestos on site being disturbed, I would rather there was a proper health and safety check to make sure everybody, not just my children, but all the children and the staff are safe. But then obviously not all children get on so well with remote learning. My children are fine. They uh, get their heads down, they get on, they try and start early so they can get finished early in the day and uh, have some time for making their Minecraft videos or whatever, they or just playing their Minecraft. There, that's the blue one done. I am going to quickly do the window because um, above the door, I'll show you while I do it. So I'm doing a diagonal stripe with the grey and then I need to add my gel pen, which was number eight. I'm not going to add these two things into the um, description. In the description, I usually put what materials I've used. I'm not going to add those in because it was just a quickie. Those um, should have been done already. So here we have our next house. I'm struggling. I'm just going to move my camera slightly. It wants to collapse. Mm. There we go. Now, this one, let me see how we're doing for time. Yeah, we're fine, we can definitely do this one. Um, this one has got the, these flowers above it. So, um, I think I'm going to do it, hmm, purple. We've got two purples in this set. Now, if you've got the, um, smaller set of Stedler, you won't have this mauve um, I mean lavender-y shade, you'll only have the dark one. So you may have to go with a different idea, or if you've got a purple in a some different set of pencils, then by all means use that. So I'm going to use, as I did with the other houses, I'm going to use the light purple for the, um, now I'm not sure how we're going to do the front door, because we've been doing those in a different colour. We don't have a different colour to the roof, it's going to have to be the same, but I'm sure we'll cope. But it will limit us a little with just the two colours, but it will help. I can show you what to do to get different um, tones and shades just with the two pencils, which is quite useful. I Thing. It's something I used to have to do when I first started out because um, I didn't have a lot of pencils, but now I do. I uh, I don't do it so much. I'm a bit rusty, so I'm going to do some shade here, some shadow, and here, 
and under the windows like we did before and in a minute under the roof line. Now here I'm assuming this is a slat of wood holding this up and that's empty space. So I'm not colouring it in as you could colour it in as a solid thing, I'm not going to. I'm going to assume that that's, um, for me, that's how it looks. But you can obviously do it however you like. You can hear someone outside gardening. And the chimney, can you see the chimney? Yes, you can. Now I think this is a slightly rounded chimney, so I'm doing it a bit darker on the edges to try and give it some shape. And now the roof, which is the darker, the number six. Again, just a gentle layer across the whole of the both, oh, all three, not both, roof areas. And then we can start to um, decide what to do with regards to shading it a little bit. It's a bit scruffy, isn't it? Okay, so we need a shadow here, like to match the one on the house below. And what I'm going to do with this one is do it a bit darker here. What I find with these two shades of purple is they actually are quite similar in that if I do this dark purple really lightly, it just looks the same as the light one. So I need to make sure that I add enough layers onto this one so that you can see it's a different colour. So that's what I'm doing now with this roof. I'm still adding lighter layers towards the middle, but now you can see that it's a different colour. We'll do that with this one too. Right, and now we have the front door, which I'm going to have to use this same colour again, but I think that's okay. Now notice on none of these houses have I done the handle. It's just um, we've got, I'm just going to zoom out just a tad, now that's in and I'm hoping you'll be able to see all the flowers then, yes. So for the centres I'm going to use the lighter colour, the number 62, but I'm going to use the same technique as I did for the teeny centres. So I'm going down with a lot of layers here near the top and then lightening towards the, as I go up, so we get a nice graduation of colour. And we do, we can see, it's what I was trying to do with the smaller centres, but you of course couldn't see them because they were so small. Now when you finish, you can have a look and see whether you think it needs a bit more, like I did then. Alternatively, you can colour it all in like this, and then start building up the layers and blend it up into the lighter colour. So it's easier to build up the dark bit and then fade it, but you know, there's no, um, there's no defined technique. It's whatever works for you. So there we are. That's all the flowers. There are no flowers below the house on this one. And <coughs> excuse me, I'm now taking the number six. And what I'm doing because I don't have another shade, I'm going to take this one all the way to the end of the petal. But just gently fade it as I go. So harder and more layers here and then gently fade it out all the way to the end. And I'm also starting to think about the next one as I'm doing this one. Um, I think I'd like it to be pink and I'm thinking about the pinks we've got in the Stedler. Now I've got a slightly orangey pink sort of salmony pink I suppose and that goes well with the very the reddish pink and then we've got a light pink which goes well with the sort of more magenta -y pink almost so they almost pair up but don't work together as a gang so I may just do two shades on that last one as well um, I have to look at it. I have to look at it and see if it'll work. It will work. I'm just looking at the flowers. They're quite simple. I don't think it will call for more shades, so we'll do that. And now I have to decide which of those pairs of pinks I do. I think I'll do the second set I mentioned because those are in the um, 
24 sets so if you haven't got the 36 you'll be able to colour along with that one okay so that will be good I find this very relaxing I hope you do too just colouring away you know you could even this is such a simple page I'm sure some people will start doing all sorts of fancy backgrounds on it but uh, I just like to keep things simple I think there's a lot of beauty in simplicity as I said in my last video I think it was maybe the one I made no it wasn't my last one anyway a while ago Johanna shared one of my pictures and it was amazing on Instagram in her stories so exciting and it was a really really simple one it had no fancy background it was just one it was just three different or two two blue pencils used for the whole thing and she shared it so it just shows even a really artistic eye and someone who's so talented can sometimes likes a simple picture so there it is together with the house you can see and we are going to move along to the last house which as I say pinks I'm going to do as I said in the two shades that I think are available in the 24 set which is 61 and 20 excuse me I am going to zoom in a little bit so we can for when we do the house I can just about get it in shot without it whacking on my uh, on my tripod now this one is got a similarish style to the um, orange one but we're just going to go for it this is the number 20 by the way the lighter pink as we have with all of the houses do the lighter color here now you can see what I'm doing I hope that I'm trying to keep some consistency between each building even though they're all different and the flowers are all different just to tie them all together and for me that helps my pictures not look like a big mishmash when I do multiple colors in a in a picture sometimes it can just look like a big mess um, I found that in world of flowers sometimes on some pages or even secret garden do every flower a different color do every leaf a different color and ugh, it just looked like a big colorful mess and uh, I wasn't happy with it but by doing the leaves the same color or following the same sort of um, techniques for the colours it can make a really big difference and so uh, that's what I learnt now we're going to go in with a bit of shadow here and under there and all around this roof possibly not above I think maybe just a tad now under here I can't, I can't do it that way you can't see like that under each of the windows okay and we're also going to use this for the chimney like we have in our previous ones um, but we'll leave the pot the um, little tiny chimney and do it the other color so now we're going to grab our uh, 61 and we're going to start by doing a light covering on the roof Oh, light covering it sounds like on the roof sounds like snow doesn't it we had snow last week I can't believe it it's like Easter and it's snowing it's great fun though don't mind a bit of snow okay so dark color under here and we can do the chimney and start to think about this roof and just shading it in a bit Yeah, I know it's, uh, I think people always expect, because we get a few sunny days that spring's coming, get all excited and then we start, we still get frosts. I love the frost. So fresh and pretty. Okay, and the door. I'm going to, again, I want to do this a little bit darker so it doesn't look exactly identical to the roof. It might be able to fool people that we used a different colour there we go now the flowers on this one let's just put it down 
I'm going to zoom out a tad. There we go. Now, these don't need lots of different colours. What I think I'm going to do is use this darker colour, the 61, for the circles. This is different to the other flowers where we've done any circles in a lighter colour. These aren't really the same sort of thing. Sorry, I don't know if you can really see. And the bottom part's here. But leaving a small gap. What I'm going to do oops, is zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. It's still quite fine, but hopefully. So a darker bit on each side. And then bring those in just gently until you just leave a tiny bit of white. So same again, dark a bit on side. Just bring the colour in lightly and gently until you get a little white bit. And yeah, it's fine. You can just leave. You could just do it with a with a hard um, layer of this colour. Really, you don't need to do it that way. Now we're going to swap to our lighter pink, which is number twenty. I'm just seeing if the flower I'm going to do is in short. It is. And my idea is to do it hard at the bottom and lighten it towards the tip. This is what we've done in every flower, so it will look consistent and match up with those. And it also um, makes it look like the light is coming from the top and it's therefore their shadow at the bottom of the petal and not so much at the top. Okay, you can see this one. No. Okay, let me pull that down or else I will forget. So the same again here, this shadowy bit here, and the lighter bit here and in the centre. I think this is such a quick page. I was actually counting earlier how many pages of this book I have completed. Now considering how long it's been out I was quite amazed that I've done more than a quarter already and I've also covered coloured the inside of the cover and the flap which I didn't count. So I think that's quite amazing that I've managed to do it so quickly and I think it's just testament to Johanna's amazing artwork that I was just so enthusiastic. I didn't want to colour anything else. I did do the planner. I did my planner page. But that's it. I just couldn't, can't stop colouring this book. Okay, and you know what we have finished? Let's zoom out as much as I can. Uh, I'm afraid the angle is a little bit old when I zoom out a long way. It's because of the angle of the camera. But there you are. You can see the whole thing finished. Simple. I would say effective. But it's doing what I want it to do anyway. Just, just looking quite simple. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have a go. And uh, thank you for watching. And happy colouring. <laughs>